Are you sick and tired of peaceful people being banned from so-called liberty events? How about liberty festivals that are more regulated than a government housing area? Now you can do something about it. The Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition is proud to announce the 4th Annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It will be held Friday, August 26th through Monday the 29th at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo. There will be canoeing, kayaking, hiking, fishing, swimming, presentations, discussions, and bacon. Lots of bacon. This event is both adult and family friendly and best of all, no overbearing central planners. There will be free Freedom Fiends and Bipcot merch while supplies last. And don't forget the longer leashes for the Bow Wows and Woof Woofs. Round up your friends and family members and get them registered today at mplfest.org. That's Mike, Papa, Lima, Fest.org. Hillary Clinton has been at the CFR, the Council for Foreign Relations, giving a speech, and she's like, I'm so glad there's a new CFR office here in Washington, D.C., so when I'm president, I won't have so far to walk to, to go to be told what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, she just, they don't even hide this stuff anymore. It, it is slavery. It's just a different name. A lot of people don't realize what it is. And when we bring these ideas to light and make people realize, you know, that this government force... Uh, is, is the problem. Um, and and it, to me, it's like I, I, I say, imagine you're an abolitionist in the 19th century, and, and the, the slave masters are giving you the same exact argument. Who's going to pick the cotton? Hey! Seeds of Liberty, read the show's description, please. Fervently complete the course, report him to the infantry. Finish him, deconstruct the fallacy. Season all production means it seems to spawn a tragedy. Peep the action, please. A fraction of the allegory. Corollary cadence is complaining on a sadder story. Menial. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast. This is episode 71. As always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week... You mean governments and the, the people that put on costumes and pretend to do stuff? Yes, Dave, that's who I'm referring to. Okay, all right, just <laughs> making sure. So this week we uh, still have Danilo out because, well, he's just too busy to bother to fix his computer. But that's all right. We have our friend Bodie sitting in for him. Hey, Bode, what's going on, man? Hi, how are you? <laughs> all right. And uh, our guest this week Hi. is Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante, Anarchist, a whole bunch of other things. And uh, we are happy to have him here with us tonight. How you doing, Jeff? Good to be here. Thank you. All right. So he's uh, popping his fiend phone cherry as well. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, this week we were gonna. While well, we have Jeff here, we were gonna talk a little possible dollar collapse. What's going on with the uh, new social media platform or whatever it is, Steam it, and also get into a little of Jeff's work. So perhaps we'll start there for anybody who doesn't know uh, Jeff and what he is up to, what he's been doing. He is, what are you, the the owner, the proprietor, the man behind the Dollar Vigilante? How would you describe yourself there, Jeff? Yeah, chief, chief dishwasher. I do a lot of things. Uh, oh. But yeah, I founded the Dollar <laughs> Vigilante in 2010. Uh, so, um, and I'm, I call myself the chief editor now. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, why don't you... Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about that for any of our audience who's not familiar with uh, that type of work? Sure, yeah. So I started in 2010. Uh, I actually started it because after the tech bubble collapse in 2000, I had an internet company worth about $240 million in the year 2000, and then one year later it was almost worthless after the tech bubble collapsed. So I uh, decided to buy a sailboat, tried to sail around the world, and spent a lot of time just reading up on how the financial markets work, how the monetary system works, all the, how the central banking system works. Uh, and uh, the first book I actually read was The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin, and that just opened my Ooh. eyes dramatically, and I just went down the rabbit hole from there. And by the time it came around to 2010, I decided I had to start writing about this stuff because hardly anyone knows how these systems work. Of course, they don't teach you in the government indoctrination camps called public schools how the mo money system works. 
uh, and it's all by design. They don't teach you anywhere. You'll never hear about it. You'll never see it uh, on the movies or on TV, on the television programming at night. You'll never see how the money system works. And actually, Ford, the creator of the automobile in the early 20th century, said if people understood how the monetary system worked, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. And I, at the time, in 2010, no one was talking about this stuff. Hardly anyone even knew what the Federal Reserve was. Of course, this has changed a little bit in the last, uh, since actually 2008, since Ron Paul was running, and he started sort of a end the Fed movement. But before that, hardly anyone knew what was so bad about it, who these people are. Still to this day, we don't really even know who they are. We know they're private. We know they're not uh, part of the U.S. government. Uh, they actually run, essentially, the U.S. government. They tell them what to do. It's, it's not uh, the other way around. So I started writing about that in 2010, and uh, we, I said it in 2010 that I expected by the end of the decade that all fiat currencies would collapse just based on the numbers, just looking at all the debt, uh, the amount of money printing going on. Uh, mm -hmm. The U.S. government itself has uh, uh, doubled its debt in the last eight years, which is absolutely insane. Of course, we've had the Federal Reserve at 0% interest rates now for eight years, uh, it's, and they've had quantitative easing, one, two, three. It's a zombie it's come going economy. going to go to infinity. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's absolutely everything's fake because of in the economy, all these numbers are fake. The unemployment numbers are totally fake. If they actually calculated it right, it'd be around 23% right now. Uh, but the way they they actually massage all the unemployment out of the unemployment numbers, but if you actually look at the amount of people actually working in the U.S. as a as a percentage of the population, I think it's at its lowest in 20 years or something like that. So we're actually in a depression, but they're printing so much money that most people don't realize it, and eventually that money is going to turn into inflation, more inflation. We actually have a fair amount right now, as you can see by, it costs uh, $100 million for a condo, <laughs> a nice condo in New York City, uh, and things like that. But as that, as that goes throughout the rest of the economy, we'll start to see hyperinflation at some point, probably not this year or next year, but probably in the next few years, uh, which is very similar to what happened in Zimbabwe or what's happening in Venezuela right now. So I've been covering uh, all that, and I cover it daily at the Dollar Vigilante. Yeah, well, it's, it's, well, it is quite a mess out there. It's interesting that you mentioned the uh, G. Edward Griffin's book. That seems to be a, a rabbit hole starter for a lot of people. It uh, actually was for me, too. <laughs> that's where I, I, I didn't want to interrupt Jeff. I was going to say, that's the red pill right there, right? <laughs> yeah, when it comes to finance and how the uh, stock markets work, how the economies work, how uh, definitely how the, uh, the economy works, uh, to read that and understand how the Federal Reserve was founded, why it was founded, what central bank, what's actually behind central banking. It was actually an idea that started a few hundred years ago with uh, the Rothschilds, and uh, they expanded all throughout Europe, and they got into every major country, and their uh, express goal was to control the money system in each country, and it was actually uh, Mayor Amschel Rothschild uh, back in the, I think, 18, early 1800s said, I care not who makes the laws as long as I control the money, uh, something along those lines. So uh, if you actually look into central banking, central banking itself is actually a tenet of communism. Uh, it has nothing to do with capitalism, obviously. And uh, if you just look into it, it is, it is actually set up. It is actually a scheme. It's a scam to impoverish everybody and to, to massively uh, make richer, not the 1%, but the 0.00001%, uh, the, mainly the people and the families who control these central banks. And so it's a, a massive scam on humanity. Uh, it's one of the biggest scams ever perpetuated on humanity. One of the other ones would be government. Uh, both governments and the central banks are mankind's two biggest enemies. And uh, most people still don't realize it. And uh, unfortunately, they're going to have to learn the hard way during a collapse, which I think is coming, uh, that uh, these things are, are a total scam, a total scheme. And and uh, they, they always run their course. Uh, central banks always end up uh, at the very end. Uh, the currency always goes to zero. Uh, the U.S. dollar hasn't done that in its third uh, uh, try. This is actually the third central bank of the U.S., the Federal Reserve. They had two before that. Of course, one of the currencies in the U.S. has already gone to zero. It was called the Continental during the Civil War, and they printed so much of that it, it became worthless. And still to this day, there's a phrase that's uh, worth, uh, I think the phrase is worthless like a Continental, or worth as much as a Continental or something like that. and so yeah, I'd uh, give a continental dollar for that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, But they don't teach these things in schools, and they, they keep it so far away from everybody that everyone's confused. And uh, that's why, actually, inflation from the central banks is one of the most nefarious taxes. It's actually a tax. It, that's essentially what it is. 
Uh, but it's so nefarious that hardly anyone, I think, I forget who, who quoted it, but not, uh, he said not one man in a million or one man in a thousand uh, ever can figure out uh, what's actually why they're being impoverished. It's incredibly smart. It's incredibly nefarious. It's incredibly evil. Uh, and uh, that's why I try to get this information out there as much as possible to shut down these central banks. They are, uh, Ron Paul actually said, it's no coincidence that the century of total war was the century of central banking, the 20th century. That's when the central banks really took hold everywhere, including the Federal Reserve. When it was brought in in 1913 on Christmas Eve, uh, snuck in, and I think it was Wilson, who was the president of the time, said that uh, he felt really bad for selling out his country. He basically sold out the country to the bankers in 1913, and it's been going on ever since. And uh, So that's why I write what I do and do what I do to expose this and try to help people to get outside of the system, uh, because the system will collapse. It's actually planned to collapse, uh, very similar to how they uh, planned to collapse in 1929. That was all planned, all proven. Uh, they increased the money supply massively from about 1925 to 1929, and then they, on purpose, uh, really decreased the money supply, which uh, made everything go crazy. The stock market went down about 90 percent in, in a very short period of time, and then they bought up the stock market. So that was another total uh, takeover of everything by the central bankers once again, and they plan to do it again, and I think uh, they're going to do it f uh, very soon. Well, if, they, see, if, they're, if they're planning to do it, then what's, I mean, doesn't that doesn't that take away their their cash cow then if they do something like that? I mean, they, obviously it can only go on for so long. But if they if, I, if are there or, or would, would, would what would you suggest that they plan to do that and then just start another one somewhere else? Yeah, basically because they do know that this can't go on forever, and we're reaching the very end stages of it right now. We actually reached very close in 2000. And eight. The entire financial system was on the verge of collapse. It was so close, and the central banks at that moment in time decided to print just a torrent of new money, uh, which uh, just a massive amount, an unprecedented amount of money, and uh, they've just kept it alive until now. And so I think they, they know it's going to collapse. Uh, they're planning for the collapse, and what they're going to do is just pull the rug again. Everything will go, it'll be um, it would be the worst time in our in our lives in terms of the the economy and finance and economics, uh, and then they'll probably try to bring in a one world government with a one world central bank as their plan. If I've been I've been reading and researching these people for decades, and uh, that essentially is their plan. So they're going to make this next collapse so bad that people will even clamor for this one world government that they want to put in. Yeah, well, that's the scary part <laughs> that that you, you, you make people so miserable and so at a loss to. For anything that they'll just, any, any anything that looks like a life raft, uh, a lifeboat, they'll just go, oh yay, we'll take that, thanks. Doesn't matter what it is, you can hand them just about anything at that point. But they're so desperate that people will just go you're, ahead and you're say absolutely yes. Absolutely right. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, I mean, it happens all the time. That's kind of what how statism works. They keep uh, beating you down, beating you down ever so slowly. So for the most part, you don't notice it until things are so horrible that you're looking for assistance in any way or shape or form so when somebody offers it to you you don't you, you often don't even think twice the only yeah, it's the only thing i have hope for is bitcoin somehow playing a factor in this and other you know cryptocurrencies well there's there's actually a reason for a lot of hope uh, but thanks to the internet people are actually aware uh, not everyone obviously uh, but uh, many, uh, many people, much more than ever before in, in uh, modern history, have people been aware that there's a problem, aware that these governments and central banks are their, their, their enemy. We're seeing that all over the place with these secessionist movements. We're seeing uh, people, uh, and the Fed movement was very strong. It's still uh, strong in certain parts, even around the world, Just look at and central Trump. banking. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, so uh, there is a, a reason for hope, and that's why it's so important to get out this message right now uh, about not only just about how this whole system's constructed and how evil it is, but uh, how to uh, move, move past that system and how to... Uh, so, so once they collapse it all over the next couple of years, if enough people understand that they were the cause of the problem and to never, ever try that again, never try government again and never try central banks ever again, if we get enough people doing that, we could move on to a world that's more peaceful and prosperous like, than we've ever known it. These central banks have impoverished so many people. People have no idea. People in the yeah. U.S. think, oh, I'm okay, I've got a job and I can pay for my rent and uh, my car to go to work and I can pay the gas to, for my car to go to work and I have enough for enough beer at night so I can watch some football. They have no idea how impoverished 
impoverished they've been by the system. If it wasn't for the system, most people would be so much better off. They would not have to be working two jobs. They wouldn't have these families worth the mother and the father working one or two jobs each just to stay alive. Uh, we'd be so much better off without it. So we have to get that information out there before it all collapses so that once it uh, does collapse, we can hopefully uh, keep people from making the same mistake that humans have been making over and over and over again in human history and go back to another government and, and this time maybe even the, the biggest and, and the most uh, and the worst one of all. I, I don't think it will though because I don't think people will go back. I, and I think the way it's actually even going to go away is it's not going to be a, it's not, I don't think it's going to even be about the collapse even if it does collapse. It's going to be about people finding a better way. Well, not having any so. other reason. I hope you're right, uh, but that is their plan, and but we, the more we that we see get now, this information out there, that uh, we can definitely do it. And you're right, things like Bitcoin uh, are a huge development. That's massive. We now have a currency that can be used anywhere in the world uh, that cannot be stopped by government or central banks, and that's why it scares them so much, and that's why they try to stop it wherever they can, but they can't stop it. There's no way to stop it unless they turn off the internet There's or turn no off the power. There's no way to stop it. Well, right. the, the and, only way is to turn off the internet, the turn off part. the power, and that's why they talk about this internet kill switch all the time because it's, they're seriously considering it. If this gets too, too it much, would kill further, too they many will people. Turn it off. Too many people depend on living on the internet now, like just to keep certain. Well, they don't care about you know, uh, killing working. people. <laughs> well, yeah, of course not. They no. killed 400 million yeah, people they, in the last century. These people have, have no care. In fact, their depopulation agendas right. are to bring it down to about 500 million people on Earth. And that's been actually proclaimed by many people. Many of these elites have said this. So it's not about worrying about if a few billion people get killed because of it. They don't care about that. Uh, so th these are very evil, very nefarious people. And people need to realize that and to stop going along with these government systems, stop paying their taxes, stop using things like the U.S. dollar or any fiat currency, move into gold, silver, and Bitcoin, and start to move past the system and just ignore these people as much as possible. Uh, they're going to make it hard on us, absolutely, uh, but that's the, really the only uh, hope and choice so to get out of it. I agree with everything there. So what do you see are like the, you know, like the trumpets of the revelation here? What do you see is like this, the dam's breaking moment for the dollar? Well, I don't think it's going to be, it's not going to be one day that everyone remembers when the dollar died. It's actually been dying uh, over the last 90 years. Uh, it's just starting to speed up now. And actually, it's been getting a bit of a reprieve over the last few years because all the other currencies are dying faster. And I actually said that when I started the dollar vigilante. I said the U.S. dollar will be the last fiat currency to collapse, but it will collapse. And uh, we're seeing Japan now is right on the cusp of collapse. Uh, they're so indebted. Uh, they're, they're, the central bank now is just printing money just to buy up everything, just to keep it alive a little bit longer. You look at Europe, absolute disaster. Countries there are just falling apart. Italy, Greece, uh, so many places. Uh, we already saw Cyprus with their bank bail-ins. Uh, we're seeing France has major problems right now. Spain has a youth unemployment rate of 50%. Uh, Britain just exited or Brexited from the EU, and now almost every other EU country is considering exiting as well, which could cause the total collapse of the euro, the currency. Uh, so uh, we are in incredibly interesting and amazing times, yet if you talk to your average person on the street, they have absolutely no idea because they do not talk about this stuff on the news or on CNBC. <laughs> they, they just no tell you, oh, keep putting your money into your IRA and buy this mutual fund. Uh, you, as it, I actually never understood what the meaning of the, uh, the phrase the revolution will not be televised was before, but now I understand it because I can see we're going through a revolution right now and they're not televising it. And because of that, most people have no idea it's even going on. Well, sure. They don't because I mean the average person there, there there's a reason that the that economics was dubbed the dismal science that was by design it was so people didn't take an interest in it so people just go oh that's just that's all boring oh I can't it's over my head oh we'll let the experts figure it out that's how people exactly. were conditioned to believe I mean I was one of those people you know going back to what we talked what we what you said at the beginning about you know about the creature from Jekyll Island like. When I say that was the book that opened my, my eyes, it was because I knew jack about the money system. I knew jack about anything other than the fact that somebody gave me money for doing work. Like that's about as far. And like if I put it in a bank, maybe if I had if I had an account with some interest, I'd gain a little money. Like that was basically the extent of my knowledge before I stumbled across that book. And like it opened my mind to like a whole new world. And now obviously I just like you guys, you know, I can see this because I pay attention a little bit more, but the average person doesn't even like, if they don't have the basics of the, of this information, they're not, even if they, this stuff is presented to them, you'll watch their eyes glaze over. 
and they will and they'll just like they want to change the subject or they'll just nod along uh huh oh sure because they don't they have no grasp whatsoever about how money works what the difference is between money and currency like they don't know like the average person no clue so that's why this yeah stuff, you're totally you're totally right yeah and, and that's that's the reason because i mean i've at least it seems apparent to me over the past especially over the past maybe two years or so now that a lot of the things that go on are a lot more blatant like they're just they're out there everywhere because i think the you know the the powers that think they be <laughs> They realize that so many people aren't paying attention. They're like, ah, we don't even have to hide anymore. We can just do this stuff openly, <laughs> and people will just go, okay, this is the way it is. So that's what that's yeah, where it absolutely. gets scary. Yeah, we saw that at the Democratic National Convention. I was shocked to see that. I couldn't believe no one else was really saying much. To see that Bernie Sanders was speaking in front of football stadiums of people while Hillary Clinton was speaking in front of schoolrooms in front of about 60 or 70 people, mostly media and a few uh, family and friends of the media. And uh, and then they show up at the, at the convention, and it's everyone's for Bernie. I, I didn't see one person who had a Hillary sign. It was all Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. And then as soon as uh, the, uh, the uh, convention was about to start, start. WikiLeaks released the information that showed the entire election was rigged, very like actual proven information that was rigged. Uh, a number of other groups released a bunch of other information. Actually, that information came from someone inside the DNC who was uh, killed a few days later, by the supposedly, way. Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Well, Allegedly. actually, Assange, Assange has basically said it was him. And uh, so then... Yeah, I watched the, the video about four times of Assange talking about this rich guy, and his eyes are just lit up with this, like, please, people, understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, well, then they go to the convention, and uh, immediately Wasserman, who's the, the chairman of the convention, immediately has to resign because this information, this evidence is so strong that it was just clear the elections were rigged. So she resigns. She immediately is hired by Hillary Clinton, and then Bernie stands up in front of all of his adoring fans and goes, he kind of like uh, coughs a little bit. He's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, vote for Hillary, and he he leaves town immediately and goes and buys a six hundred thousand dollar lake home, and and no one's like saying anything about this. Like you're totally right; it's totally blatant because no one cares. Hey, no Jeff. one is is enough is cognizant enough in the U.S. with all the fluoride in the water and all the chemtrails and all the the food that is just all poison for the most part, and then all the beer that they're drinking and all the 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 antidepressants they're on because they live in such a crappy place. Uh, most people just are not even able to realize what's going on. We're just sitting there looking at it like, oh, my God, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Well, yeah, and that's that's the thing, because, I mean, the, the, as far as, like, the DNC, like, that whole the, the debacle at the DNC, they, the, I mean, the, the Bernie supporters were upset, but they still don't recognize the system as the problem. They just think Hillary got them. So they're just mad at one. Yeah. So, so they say focus on one person, you know. Jeff, do, yeah. you, know who, uh, do you know who Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, who stepped down to give her that position? At the DNC? I, I do know, but I forget. But why don't you remind me? It's it's Hillary's VP pick. Uh, Tim Kaine, right? right? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, all, it's all... It's all... Everything's <laughs> so rigged. And Vote harder. It, it goes way beyond just this election, too. This has been going on for a century. It's been going on since JFK, really. The whole thing is rigged. It's, a, it's not an election. It's a selection. Uh, and, and most people just don't realize it. Hopefully this time they might start to realize it, but I think we're almost getting too late now. Yeah. That's why I think they might let Trump win. Well, it and looks like... With the in my back, estimation... You know? In my estimation, it looks like they're going to definitely make Hillary win. Uh, I think the reason that they're allowing Trump to do what he's doing is they're going to allow him to be... See, he says a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, no, don't get me wrong, like he says some decent stuff too, but I don't like any politician. But he says a lot of just off-the-wall crazy stuff. So they're trying to make him out like he's crazy. And then actually the, what you guys have probably noticed is this year the Libertarian Party has had a huge amount of interest. Uh, finally, people are figuring out what libertarianism is. So they took over the Libertarian Party this year with two essentially neocon conservative uh, yeah. people, Gary Johnson. Johnson and Weld. Uh, Weld is pro-gun control. Uh, Gary Johnson uh, doesn't want to turn, uh, end the Fed. He he wants to, He actually thinks uh, Hillary Clinton has been an amazing uh, stateswoman. Uh, he wants to ma make Nazis bake cakes. Uh, he he's like not. A, neither of them are libertarians. So I think they want to do that to split up the sort of the the right side vote a little bit so that Hillary gets in. That's my that's my take on it. But we'll see what happens. 
See, I don't. I, I still don't think it necessarily matters. I, I really, I, I'm not convinced that there's there's one chosen one this time around or any time around. I think, I think for the most part, the the people that the establishment put up, you know, who who end up getting the nominations, almost always get to that point because the people who are really in charge honestly don't care which one wins because they'll be able yeah. to use either one of them just the same, you know, the same way. Like there I mean for for all the for all the bluster and all all the all the you know the stuff that the Trump trots out there, he's no different than Hillary really. He's an opportunist. No, they're like best friends. He'll, They've been yeah, best friends. Yeah, exactly. Decades. Oh, he has a ton of Rothschilds <laughs> connections as well. If you mean if you want oh, yeah. to go down the conspiracy hole. Well, yeah, but yeah, I'm not so a... they got both sides covered for sure. Yeah, but I do think they always have a, a favorite, like one that they they prefer. I think Hillary's oh, the one. Oh, sure. This year. I think I... in two, I think in 2000 it was Bush who was their preferred one because they were planning 9/11 already, and uh, they wanted because Bush was so tied in with all the the neocons who were all planning all this stuff. That's why actually, if you look back at the 2000 election with the hanging chads and and they weren't sure who won, and then they it, sh- it basically showed that they rigged it so that Bush won. So I, I think you're right. They make sure that there's no way they can lose in it, but I think they do have a preferred candidate. That's my thing. You know, I, I can buy that. I would think that uh, there, there probably is one that would be eat, work work for them better. <laughs> but in either, like I said, yeah, I like Hillary Clinton has been at the CFR, the Council for Foreign Relations, giving a speech, and she's like, "I'm so glad there's a new CFR office here in Washington D.C. So when I'm president, I won't have so far to walk to to go to be told what I'm supposed to do." <laughs> <laughs> like she just, they don't even hide this stuff anymore. Uh, so, uh, so she's definitely more tied in with them. But Trump, if he somehow wins, which I doubt he will, uh, even if you just look at demographics, right? And you look how stupid most of the Americans are now. And, and no offense, I'm from Canada. There's just many stupid Canadians too. But uh, people have been dumbed right down. Now. Well, if you if you look at it, right? Why did Barack Obama mostly get in? Oh, he's black. This will change everything. The whole problem is it's been white people. So they get the black guy in, and now cops are killing black people every few seconds in the U.S. And now everyone's like, oh, I, I think the problem must be that it's men. Let's try a woman. Uh, and, and, you know, half the people in the U.S. are women. Uh, many of them are dumbed down. I think 25% of women in the U.S. are on these antidepressant chemicals. They're, they're just totally uh, lobotomized. Uh, they'll just show up and, and check the box for Hillary, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> well, see, I, I, I honestly don't. I don't, mean, I don't mean to make you guys sad. Oh, no, I don't. Like I said, I, I, to me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I don't care which one of them. It's true. Yeah, I don't care which one of them ends up in, in charge. I'm not gonna pay. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna give them the same amount of attention regardless. I I, I think that Hillary winning would be uh, the most blatant sign that not only is it rigged, but even when it's rigged, it's still like there's oh there is a chosen there is a chosen person ahead of time because <laughs> her whole thing like you like you said earlier, Jeff, about like Bernie's rallies versus her rallies, and then the stories came out after the DNC that. They had, to, you know, there was loudspeakers put in place and fake applause <laughs> when she was speaking. Why, well, they, filled the, they had to pay people to fill the seats after yeah. the Bernie people left. Yeah, because the Bernie they, people yeah. were all, And then they took, and then they, well, there, there was the, one of the greatest pictures I saw was there was, there was one Bernie supporter that, that stayed and took the signs that they handed out about, um, <laughs> What was it? Uh, you know, you know, being a team, or you know, everybody for whatever it was, everybody all together, or something like that. And it, and and she blocked out all the letters, so it just said "get her." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and they they of course promptly t- tossed her out after that. But it's like like that's what it was. So it's like it's not even like I said, it's not even just like the the system is rigged in general. Like if she does win, it's gonna have to be because they they literally, um, you know fix the votes rigged. they had yeah they had to because she she doesn't have support that's the thing no have you guys no. ever met one hillary supporter no that's life? the I have thing i've never met one yeah i've met it i've met a <laughs> yeah. bunch of trump i've met a bunch of people who uh, are voting trump, for trump sanders lots yeah uh but bernie thing, i don't go ahead uh, I, I don't i don't think it's necessarily fixed i think it's a, it's like a play man i think it's on that level like i think there's these roles and they're just rotating well, whatever it, it is, it's definitely positions. not uh, it? a free and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, transparent election process of the best person in the U.S. It's pretty sad if it came down to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, but, but it's just so sad anyways, it's believable. Other than a leader. 
a leader of a criminal empire. A misleader. I mean, Trump really runs what a casinos. He, he's a pretty efficient casino manager, so uh, <laughs> why not let him run the American government for a little while and see if he can fix it? I just think Trump's the anti-war candidate. That's kind of why I hope he wins. I think everybody else is war, even Gary Johnson war. Yeah, isn't it funny too, right? Because it used to be the Republicans were always the war side, and the Demo Democrats was always the anti-war side. Now they've flipped it so that all the Democrats who are all anti-war, they're voting for pretty much the biggest war uh, hawks, <laughs> the biggest, uh, most. She, she wants, wants to, to bomb kill Russia. Everybody. Legitimately, she wants to bomb everything. Oh yeah, and they're she's just so cheered on. Well, it's the Democrats, so it's good. It's fine. You look at Nobel Peace Prize winner Barack Obama. There hasn't been one day of uh, without war in his entire presidency. They're bombing Libya, they're bombing <laughs> Syria, he's drone bombing wedding parties in Pakistan. He's still got his Nobel Peace Prize uh, up on the wall because those prizes are given out by the same people who own everything, <laughs> including all the governments. It's all a big scam. People yeah. got to wake up. Well, yeah, but with 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 him at least, he can still play off with. Well, once I was in once I was in charge, I didn't have a choice. She. Do before she was even in charge has already made it clear that she wants to bomb that like she makes Ted Cruz Mr. Let I want to make the sand glow um, look like a pacifist <laughs> All right, she is a scary, <laughs> scary fucking woman, dude. Like, well, just look at all the bodies Ted lying Cruz in like the a wake. Pacifist. She is. Well, a, just look at all the bodies lying in the well, wake of her. Well, like, seriously, week, I, I, I would just, I would <laughs> imagine when she's present, how many people are just gonna be offed, just black bagged in the middle of the night, oh. anyone, everywhere. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Like, I don't I mean, scare me. I'm, I have trouble sleeping, anyways, Jeff. <laughs> I'm not. Well, see, I'm not worried about them. Well, if they're coming to get us, Dave, they're coming to get us anyway. There's nothing we can really do about that. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, like, I was talking about this with somebody the other night, and like the whole thing with with like Hillary is insane because so many people, like the people that you know, that actually seem like they're out there to defend her, claim that people just want to, you know, oh, there's you don't have proof of any of this. It's like, okay, listen, one or two people dying of mysterious circumstances, maybe even three. Yeah in your lifetime yeah all right maybe maybe that's coincidence there's a fucking football field full of fucking people <laughs> like three in the last three months alone like the the the, right. the kid from the dnc wasn't even there was him there was the um somebody who was supposed to testify was, against her earlier this year like a couple months back and two people serving them uh serving them uh, court summons and then yep. one guy about to testify against the Clinton Foundation. Yes. Yeah. He, he was he was working out though and I guess he dropped his barbell. Oh, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah, that's the one so, I'm thinking of. That was you know, that happens. I don't know if you guys have ever worked out in the gym. Like It happens all the time that you just crush your own throat. Oh, yeah. Just right before you're about it's to a, testify. It, right. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge well, there's problem no proof. in the workout community. <laughs> well... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge problem. They're, they're starting to sell neck guards. So, Everyone's so I think we lately. thoroughly shat on. Uh, I think we thoroughly shat on old Hill Dog here. You guys want to mm -hmm. move on to steam it and uh, see what see, see what the the jazz is all about here. It, uh, Jeff Jeff's been making killer money on this thing, checking it out, and uh, so far from what I hear, Jeff has no back backroom deals to to make <laughs> any kind of shady money off of this. This is all legit and all uh, uh, organic. Well, yeah, that's all I can tell you is I didn't even know about it until about a week ago, actually exactly one week ago. Some people had mentioned it over the last few months, but I never looked at it. I get so many cryptocurrency type deals coming across and someone mentioned, hey, it's a new social network backed by a cryptocurrency. And I was like, oh, that sounds good, but I got 30 other things to look at. And then last week I went on there and I posted, hey, I'm on here. The Dollar Vigilante is now on Steam. And it's sort of like a, a mix between Facebook and Reddit is essentially what it is. And uh, on the site, you can actually upvote and you get paid in this new cryptocurrency called called Steam, and I made about $15,000 from just that one post, and that caught my attention, and I was like, okay, what is this? I started looking into it. The more I looked into it, the more I really liked it, so I've been posting on there every day. I make a few thousand dollars a day posting on there, uh, and um, uh, it's, it's actually, I think it could be a revolution in social media. Uh, I've only been into it for a week. I'm not, I haven't looked into every aspect of the cryptocurrency, but if you uh, produce content, you should definitely be on there. Uh, if you have a, especially if you have a decent audience, Audience. If you start posting on there, you can definitely make uh, some money just by posting on there. It's actually a, a fantastic, amazing concept. Uh, as you know, if you post on Facebook, it doesn't matter if you have a million or 10 million followers, you don't make one penny from putting your stuff up on Facebook. 
uh, on this site, if you bring a lot of people there and they really like your content, you can make money. So instead of the money going to advertisers, it actually goes to the content producers. And the money itself actually comes from the mining process of the currency, which is actually quite ingenious. The more I look into it, it's actually quite genius. So if you look at Bitcoin, when all, all new Bitcoins that are created are created by mining. And so you have to buy a bunch of computer yeah. equipment, spend a bunch of money, spend a bunch of time, and then you can get some Bitcoin from it. With uh, Steam, only 25% of, of the, the Steam that is created by mining goes to the miners. 75% of it actually goes to content creators. Uh, so it's, it's mm -hmm. actually quite ingenious. And uh, in the last week, I've, I've been all over it. I've, I've just been um, amazed at how well it works and how it, well it's been going so far. It's already the third biggest cryptocurrency, and, and it just started a few months ago. A lot of people are saying it's a scam or or it's a Ponzi scheme, things. but I'm not saying to invest any money into the thing at all. I'm just saying get on the site because this thing is printing up steam every day as the miners create the steam, and 75% of it goes to people who are creating good content on the site. So if, if you create content, uh, and if you want to make a little bit of money or even a lot of money, some people make a, a lot of money on there. I, I got uh, excited about could, my $4 uh, just I just put on made. Schema. Yeah, so there you go. You could have posted on Facebook and you'd make nothing. You posted it there and you made four. That's four dollars more than Facebook, and it's also mm -hmm. uncensorable. So everything that gets put on there is actually put into the blockchain directly and cannot be changed afterwards, and oh. it cannot be uh, shadow banned or things like that. As many of us Liberty people, are, as you probably know, on Facebook, on yeah. Google Ads, on all these things, they limit our content. They limit our reach massively. Uh, on this site, you cannot do that. So this uh, site has a lot of advantages, and I definitely recommend people check it out. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, see, I mean, I don't know. My 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 issues with Steam so far. I've, I mean, Dave set one up for our, for our for our page, and you know, I know he and he's been posting some stuff there. The first thing I came across was a couple of people, well, quite a few people, had take had found the white paper and mm -hmm. shredded the thing. <laughs> Like, I'm not a technical person, so reading the white paper, it would have been over my head. But some of these people that do this stuff regularly, like, found some, seem to find some really big holes in it. Like, almost like it had just been a lot of words and phrases were just kind of thrown in there. Didn't really mean anything. Well, actually, I, I read the white paper, and it, I actually was very impressed by it. Yeah. Uh, I've heard some of the people talking about what they didn't like about it. Uh, for example, Tone Bays has been a big uh, person saying, this is a Ponzi scheme, it's a scam. And uh, I'm actually debating him next week, by the way, on my show, Anarchast, about it. Because I want to find oh. out exactly how this all works so we can figure it out. Uh, but I looked through it, and one of the things he says is, well, they, they pre-mined a lot of uh, the currency. And I don't see any problem with that. Uh, if it was an actual cryptocurrency that was just going to be used as a cryptocurrency, it would look very sketchy if they were pre-mined most of it and kept most of it themselves. But this is a very different uh, type of a thing. This is a social network backed by a social network coin or a, a cryptocurrency. And uh, so I look at it this way. Steemit could compete with Facebook within one to two years, in my opinion. Once people find out that they can make money just by posting the same thing they've been posting on Facebook and post on Steemit, you'll see millions of people moving yeah. over to this site. Absolutely. People like money. I don't know if you guys noticed. And, uh, and so I, yeah, I think, I think the dust with has Facebook. to settle for a minute, you know? I, th I think that the worries right now is, is you know, everybody's like, ooh, you know, be careful because Sue and a, a couple of others have been really shady. And, yeah, uh, but be careful you know, of what, though, right? So like, far, I mean, when you see Larkin Rose pull out a bunch of money. Well, it's not even. When you see Larkin Rose get paid, you're like, well, okay, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> well, it's, uh, yeah, but you it, know, it, Jeff Berwick's making money. He's making money. My friend's making money. A few other people are making money. It's like, hey, it looks kind of legit because they're actually getting this money into their, their pocket. Well, yeah, it's totally legit in that sense. So well, there is really no risk on going on it. Well, no. The, I, 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 going, I would say uh, there's always a risk of dumping a lot of currency on there, though. Like if you, you know, I would, I wouldn't encourage that right now. Well, that's that's. Uh, I think that's a separate issue, though. I'm ta I'm talking about what right. what people go to do there. Like, the, the, I mean, the only thing I the only thing it's a, a time investment is the only thing I see is that in, in, unless you're already writing for other. Unless you're already doing like articles and stuff elsewhere that you're that you're also putting there, so it's literally just taking the time to actually post it there versus just writing something specifically for Steemit, then no, your opportunity costs are actually rather low right there. So I can't, I'm not going to begrudge people for for doing that. The I, I know the see the problem is I I keep running into people that that 
hear other people say scam, Ponzi scheme. Um, the closest thing I've actually been able to, a couple of people that I've talked to about it, that seems more likely if if it's uh, if, if it is an unethical uh, setup, which there is some evidence that that it could be, but would be more like a multi-level marketing scheme than anything else not like a ponzi scheme in the sense where everybody thinks that you know you're get you're ended up getting ripped off no more it's more like a multi-level marketing scheme that when the system finally does collapse because it's cre- if 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 that is correct it's essentially creating a bubble right now all the people like the so-called whales and everybody else that's actually putting the money in is going to get out with money <laughs> And the couple of people like you, like Larkin, uh, like our friend Jared, who have been actually getting money regularly, will be able to walk away. But the people on the next level of, you know, the quote unquote management at that point will be the ones holding the bag. And that's how, you know, well, so that that's that that's for me, that's enough for me to say I'm going to stay away from it. But I, like I said, I, I don't, I don't, because people, I, I've seen a lot of people, including Larkin, who said, oh, people say this is a scam, and my, and our friend Jared, oh, people say this is a scam. How am I getting? No, that, just be, if, if, just because it is a scam doesn't mean you're the one getting scammed. Somebody is, and somebody, and somebody will. That's, that's the idea of a scam. And I'm, again, I'm not saying this one definitely is. I'm saying if it was. Uh, so. Well, I would say that every, anyone who puts money into the cryptocurrency can look at all the information on it. So that information is out there, as you pointed out. And some people have said they have problems with what's in the white paper. So that's their own decision if they want to take a chance and speculate on this currency. So in that sense, it's not a scam whatsoever. People are just making a choice. I Again, I have, I have not looked enough into the currency to recommend buying the currency, but I definitely have used the site enough and seen enough people actually all my friends combined including Larkin James Corbett Luke Radowski have made over a hundred thousand dollars this week on steam it and take and a lot of them have taken that money out I haven't actually I actually reinvested into it uh, because I think this thing has real potential it's very early it's very speculative but I really like the idea well I bet a few yeah. of those guys are hurting for money just speculatively well, then they're just... Yeah, absolutely. You Larkin put all lives your in the woods. You know, he got everything taken away from him by the IRS, so he was yeah. very happy to make uh, five or $10,000 this week. Right. Well, I don't see how it's unethic- uh, How it could be unethical, though. The only way it'd be unethical is if they were lying about how the system works, but most of it is based in the blockchain. It's actually something right. you can look at. Uh, even the Steam dollars, the Steam power, these are all contracts on the blockchain. So I don't see how, in that way, it could be a scam. Now, I could be missing something. Well, uh, I, I haven't think people heard are any just credible confused. evidence that it is a scam in any way, though. Right. I think it's, they just don't. They can't grasp it quite yet. It's something completely new. Yeah, it's new. so new. This it's is not coins thing I said in your this pocket. week. It's what, what I said this week. I was around when the internet started, and I, I was having this same conversation about the internet in 1993. I was telling people, <laughs> I'm going to quit my job at the bank. I'm going to get on the internet, and everyone said, Oh no, it's never going to catch on. It sounds like some sort of scam. How are these people doing this? All this sort of stuff. Email it was a complete nerds. paradigm shift. And then in 2011, right. I was uh, there just a few years after Bitcoin started when I found out about it in 2011 at three dollars, and I said, This is going to change the world. This is a evolution in money and banking. I went all over. I was oh, on yeah. CNBC, Fox Business, Bloomberg talking about Bitcoin, and most of the comments were, oh, he's crazy. This is a scam. This is a Ponzi <laughs> scheme. Uh, this will never work. This will never catch on. Uh, you've seen what's happened with Bitcoin since. So I, I feel mm-hmm. the same way. In my first, I've only known it for a week now, so I could change if I find out new information at any time. But up until this point, I feel it feels very similar to the start of the internet or the start of Bitcoin because it's such a new concept that most people are just like, well, that can't be possible. No way. That's it. Must be some sort of Ponzi scheme or scam. But it's actually set up in a really ingenious way, and it could work. I'm not saying it will work. It's very I early. I can see it's a very competitor. I can see. I can totally. see a competitor of Steam coming up that's Bitcoin backed for sure. I could definitely see that, and that one taking over. Well, that would have a problem because they wouldn't be able to print the Bitcoin to pay the content uh, contributors. So it wouldn't get, gain a mass audience because people would not be getting paid to post their content. So you have to kind of understand how it all works. Well, so I've the spent way all those week work is... Well, yeah, the, the Bitcoin back ones, the way those work is uh, you essentially pay small amounts of Bitcoin each time you upvote or do anything uh, on there. 
So that's totally different, right? So that would be so you'd yeah, go yeah. on the site and you would spend money by uploading people. Yeah, uh, this one, you mine. just post your stuff and you can actually make money. So I think that while you might be right, that's that sort of a concept might also work. Uh, but I think this one has more potential if it is sustainable. And what we have to look into is how they've set it up to see if it is sustainable. If it is, this could be a, a complete revolution in how social media is done. We could yeah. see Facebook, Twitter, all of them gone in a couple of years and move and everyone move to a decentralized platform, which would be absolutely right. beautiful because then they can't be censor so it, they easier. can't shut it down. Well, uh, Reddit is so a, a top share. 10 website. Reddit's a top 10 website, and Steemit is kind of like a Reddit with a cryptocurrency slapped over it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so if it just takes that Reddit spot as a top 10 website, then we're talking billions and billions of dollars. Absolutely, and you'll see the cryptocurrency take off. It's currently trading around $2 for Steam. If all of a sudden Steemit gets so much traction that everyone's going to, and we're starting to see that happen already, uh, it, and it starts to look like it might take over like in the space of Reddit or in the space and these sort of spaces, you could see investors just piling into this thing. It could be an amazing speculation. Uh, again, I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I have absolutely no idea. I didn't know if Bitcoin was going to work either in 2011. I've been happily surprised with that. I knew the internet was going to work because I'd been on computers my whole life and I knew all they needed <laughs> to do was connect them all because uh, back in the old days before the internet you have to call each other's house to, to trade information mm -hmm. and if one person already called in, you just get a busy signal, and I was like, they got to make this oh. so we can all get on at the same time, and when they did, I was like, okay, this is it. Uh, uh, yeah, I just see, yeah, Steam it, that's the thing, though, because it, it, it drives the production as it's being, like, the actual use of it to share information is what's driving the mining, right? Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, and that's, another thing that's I found just using insane. it, uh, as I've told so many friends to go on it this week, and many of them are like, okay, I'll go on, I'll post content, and they make some money. And they told me before they got on, yeah, I'm just going to take it out right away and put it into Bitcoin. But most of them have actually put it back in because they're like, I can see the total potential of this thing. And plus, as you put the money back in, you get more power on the site. And it's complete mm -hmm. human nature to want to have some sort of power <laughs> so you can like flag somebody and their vote goes way down yeah. and things like that if you've got more power. It actually taps into human nature. So you can see a lot of people really getting into this concept. That's really cool. I didn't even... Wow. Well, yeah, uh, that's... Yeah, it's... it's. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. Well, that's, that's how... That, that's, that, that's, part of, that's part of how the system works, right? You don't... It, just because you get... Just because people upvote your stuff doesn't mean you actually get anything. It's pe it's people who actually have clout or whatever they call it in there, or steam power or whatever it is. Whatever you actually have in there, that, that you know, because, like, the people that... The people that upvoted yours, the, the your first one, Jeff, they weren't mm -hmm. just regular people. There's no way you. No, make it actually it turned it turned out the founder, especially Dan Larimer, is one of the founders. I didn't even know him before. I just uh, met him when I interviewed <laughs> him this week. He's like a huge fan of mine. So he, as soon as I went on, he upvoted, and he's the he's the biggest whale on the site. He's got the most steam power. Well, and yeah, what happens is once a once a whale votes, a lot of other people start voting because they know the site, the post is going to make a lot of money and they actually can profit from it. So when you upvote a post, you get 25% of whatever the uh, poster makes. So it, it creates sort of like this uh, tsunami effect or tidal wave effect. And so, yeah, mine <laughs> went just to 15000 dollars in a few hours uh, but it turned out that uh, well the site is mostly anarchist mostly anarcho capitalist the the two founders are anarchists um, almost everyone who works with it or, or for it is anarchist so they're already oh. quite big fans of mines and then they're also into cryptocurrency and I've been one of the biggest people talking about cryptocurrency for all these years so I was sort of like you know the Maybe perfect we'll person at the right on time the here yeah, you should definitely try. They're incredibly busy. I was I was quite lucky to get them on. Uh, you can imagine I, they're, I can they're imagine. growing so fast right now. They're just they're running right now. This well, so far really I like it. So what I've seen, I've posted a few things. I have learned some stuff. Don't post more than four times a day, and try to space those out. I've, yeah, it's I've, even I've better. Heard, less, than two, less than two times a day, one to two times max, and I would space it out 12 hours. If you want to get the most potential for making money off of your post, uh, and there's mm -hmm. all sorts of that you learn as you go. I've been learning all week all these little tricks and techniques that can make you more money. And of course, as more people come on, they'll be like looking for these tricks, and it's, you know, it's going to create a really interesting environment as people get on it, and and everyone starts to yeah. figure out how they can attract whales and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's it's fascinating to watch. It's like watching an entire 
entirely new economic system uh, come into formation in just a matter of months and how it all um, self-regulates uh, because it, there is no real regulator of it. Uh, it's just the system. And they can change the system somewhat, but it's really interesting to see and it's going to be fascinating to watch how it progresses. I'll be definitely on there all the time checking it out because I see this as being a, a potentially huge uh, evolution in how social media is done. I guess uh, I guess time will tell then, right? Yep, always yeah. does. <laughs> I yeah, I don't I don't have my hopes up anymore for anything, uh, ever. Oh, that <laughs> so sad. I'm just look I'm uh. <laughs> I'm just looking at this uh, just hopefully optimistically. I guess I, that's uh, I'm not I don't have my hopes up, but you know some some part of me wants this to take over and people get paid for using and interacting with each other with content involved. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, Facebook takes too much for us. I mean, if Zuckerberg is so rich, where do you think he's getting all his money? Is selling us. Let's take that back. <laughs> Steam it or Steam it variety in the future that comes along that might just replace it. That's going to help us. I. That's what I'm for. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I like it as well. Yeah. I'm super excited. I can't wait. I'm a... I'm, yeah. Everybody needs a morale boost. And I think we'll we'll have a nice big push. I have an idea. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> the, the wheels are turning now, huh? Oh man, you have no idea. That's all I needed. I just needed someone to talk about Steam it reasonably, <laughs> and with Bitcoin. Perfect. Thank you. I have the image. I need to share the image. It's <laughs> so, awesome. So Jeff, before we go, I kind of wanted to ask you: Do you think negative interest rates are like the death knell for the Fed? Oh, I can't believe we have negative interest rates. What an insane idea. Uh, the Swiss uh, doesn't government make sense. came out. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. That's how crazy the system is. It's on its last legs that they're just doing Well, when you have this magical crazy. thing called government, Jeff, certain things that don't make sense, usually they, they make sense. For a short period of time, yeah. And so the Swiss <laughs> government put out a 50-year bond with a negative interest rate. So if you're like 40 years old and you lend the, the Swiss government $100,000, you won't get that back to your 90 and you'll get back less than $100,000. And the Swiss uh, currency probably won't exist at that point. Actually, there's no chance it will <laughs> exist. And even if it does, it'll be so inflated, it'll be absolutely worthless. Who would actually buy these things? That's what This system is so crazy that people are just running around because they don't know where to put their money to make it safe because a lot of people, especially a lot of people with a lot of money, know it's all going to collapse. And they're just they're scared. They don't know where to put their their money because there's not too many places to put Our it. One Swiss listener is sitting there sw shaking his head, going, "I'm going to prove Jeff Berwick wrong." <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. But I, all I know is I'm not going to lend the Swiss government money so that they pay me back in 50 years less money. That's an insane idea. Well, I think the Fed is about to move to that because, I mean, that's their next next trick, right? If they raise rates, the economy collapses. They either have to stay at what they're at right now or go into this negative thing. And I think they're going to go into the negative thing. And when upper middle class and upper class people's bank accounts start just getting drained just for having money in there – they're going – things will turn badly quickly. Well, that's actually why they're trying to get rid of cash rate now, and they've been doing that in Europe as well. So they realized in Europe, because a number of countries already have negative interest rates, even on the bank accounts, so people started withdrawing cash. So they're trying to get rid of cash immediately, and they're, they've actually succeeded in numerous countries, including Sweden and Denmark. They almost got rid of it completely, so people have to use debit cards to buy anything, so they can't take their money out, because everyone would if they could, because they know they're just going to lose money keeping it in the bank. As far as the Fed raising rates, you're right, if they raise rates even – to something like 5%, which is not a massive amount. That used to be the low end of where interest rates would always be. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's just say it's a 10%, which actually is not a massive amount either. That's a, that's a fairly reasonable level over the uh, history of, of these sort of things. Just to, just to make the numbers easy, the U.S. government has $19 trillion in debt right now. So if the interest rate moved to 10%, which is not a massive level, that would be $1.9 trillion per year in interest payments alone. That's almost the entire tax extortion theft base of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. So every penny that was paid for tax uh, uh, 
if the interest rate went to 10%, would go just to pay the interest on the debt. Uh, so it, it would be game over. So uh, if they allowed that to happen, the U.S. government would massively collapse, which would be uh, amazing. Uh, uh, <laughs> it would be one of the best things to ever happen for humanity if that happened. Uh, but I think what they're going yeah. to do is go negative, uh, just like everybody else, and try to keep this game going for a couple of years longer by printing more money. And it'll eventually Until they go can into soak up more and more assets, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, we'll when you think about it, the Fed owns all the top banks, and the top banks own all the mortgages. So the Fed owns all the mortgages. So they own all the houses. Yeah, I think it was... You know what I'm uh, saying? And then if you're being forced Tom, to use Tom their Jefferson. currency... Yeah, it was Thomas Jefferson who said that uh, if you allow central banking, you'll uh, uh, wake up uh, homeless on the continent your forefathers founded. And I, I don't believe in any of that forefather stuff. That was just a coup. Uh, but uh, he, he was right. Uh, that's exactly what happens with central banking. You will end up, everyone will end up with nothing, and this, the people who own the central bank will end up with everything. That's the plan, and that's the scam. You're right. Yeah, well... On that depressing note, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I, we're we're not gonna let it happen though. No. Well, it's it's gonna we're gonna, we're gonna we fight the globalist to, uh, Illuminati. It can, we're it, gonna stomp them in the ground it, it, with it, Jeff Berwick and Alex Jones's help here. We're gonna crush everybody. <laughs> it it can and likely will happen, but well, the best we can do individually is just prepare ourselves for it and. Move away yeah, absolutely. Just prepare. Try to convince other people to uh, do the same. The, well, the one positive note is if you do know what's going to happen and you are prepared, you could actually make a massive fortune during this. It's when the blood is in the streets, as they always say, when things get crazy, uh, that's when actually generational fortunes are made. So there is some positives to this. Yep. If you're aware of what's going on, you can make a fortune during this uh, period. Uh, but if you're not, uh, you're going to be wiped out like everybody else. Yep. Yeah, everybody was like, hey, I... Hey, my, my one of my dad's friends was talking to me. He's like, "Hey, man, I got a couple of uh, thousand dollars uh, to invest in something," and I was like, "Well, you probably should buy Bitcoin or gold." And he was like, "Ah, I got plenty of gold, and I'm not messing with your newfangled Bitcoin. You got any other ideas?" I said, "Gold mining companies and the companies that make equipment for these gold mining companies." And yeah, he was absolutely. Like, Smart. We, could see a huge, we could see a huge rise in the gold mining companies. I expect gold and silver to skyrocket in the next year. Uh, if they do, the gold stocks will go up thousands of percent. So there's always a bull market somewhere. There's always a way to uh, yep. survive and do well, uh, but you have to be aware, and this is definitely one time in human history that everyone should be aware that this is a uh, critical time uh, that uh, could... Uh, we're going to see everything change over the next couple of years, absolutely everything. Our entire world is going to change. I can't wait, man. Yeah, it could be absolutely uh, awesome once we get through Collapse the isn't the always crash. bad. Yeah, no, the collapse could be very healthy. It just, uh, for a period of time, a lot of people are going to be really desperate, so get some guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prepare, prepare, prepare. So, all right, well, before we get out of here, Jeff, thank you uh, very much for coming on. It was uh, good to talk to you. Do you want to uh, get any plugs before we uh, take off? Uh, just mention, just go to dollarvigilante.com. Just put your email right on the front page. We'll send you our daily blog. We're also on YouTube. Just type in the Dollar Vigilante. We do a video almost every day on there. And go on Steam it and upvote all my votes. <laughs> uh, it's at steamit.com. And if you just go to steamit.com slash asterisk, I guess, Dollar Vigilante, you'll see my at post sign, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah at sign. Uh, also, yeah, check sign. out Anarchast, man. I love Anarchast. You have a wide range of guests on there. Some are crazy, some are really cool, but you take all. I love it. Yeah, that's uh, we're actually on our 300th episode coming out this week, so I've been doing it for about four or five years now, and we've had on about 300 anarchists. We've had on, as you mentioned, some wild and crazy people, John McAfee, Doug Casey, uh, all kinds of amazing people on it, and so yeah, if you're interested in the uh, philosophy of freedom and anarchy and anarcho-capitalism, building a new uh, uh, system, uh, so many of uh, the anarcho-capitalists are building so many amazing things now uh, to, to get us beyond this governmental system, including uh, yep. Cell 411, an app that can get rid of the the need for a police state, the need for 911 government emergency services and all those sort of things. So we're trying to build the new uh, world to make the old governmental world obsolete. And I should just mention we have our annual conference in Acapulco, Mexico right here called Anarchopoco. You can look it up on the internet. It's at the end of February. We're expecting about a thousand anarcho-capitalists from around the world on the beach. Very nice. Very nice. That, that, one's, always, that one's always unfortunately out of my range because, well, I lost my well, my passport expired a while ago, and they won't give me a new one. So I'm unfortunately stuck inside the U.S. for a while. You're well, stuck I in don't the know if you Empire know, but you State. 
you, you can actually uh, cross the border by foot in many of the border crossings, and they have no one there even checking passports. Just so you know. Yeah, no, I know that, but that's the one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in a place where I'm ready. I'm prepared to uh, not come back if I can't just yet. So <laughs> I got to tie up a few, loo- few, few loose ends before I make that journey on foot. All right, uh, Bodie, Dave, anything else you guys want to close out with? No, I just want to uh, thank Jeff for coming on. Uh, thank him for downloading Fiend Phone and uh, taking the time to talk to us, man. I had a blast. Uh, I look forward to your future content that you keep putting out, man. Uh, I've always been a fan of yours, and I just keep rocking, man. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. All right. So if this does it for another episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at theseedsofliberty.com. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace. projecting their own self-hatred onto us. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.